What's up, guys? Frank here with my boy Chris Garza of Suicide Silence, who's about to release his latest and greatest, Remember You Must Die. It's out this March. It's a fucking fantastic record that I highly recommend. Chris, thank you so much for killing some time with me this morning. Stoked, man. Dude, is, uh, is, this, is this early for you, or are you kind of like an early... Nah, nah I'm a... Just by brute force, I force my, my bones to accept. You got to wake up at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. And, and just go. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm an early person, too. No matter how late I drink, I'm like, all right, got to get up. Sun's up. You know? You know? And, and, and what's fucked up about your brain is, like, sometimes I'll, like, I'll try to sleep in. Like, okay, turn everything off. Everything. The fucking world, the sh opinions, whatever. Try to sleep in, and still I'll wake up, like, at 7 a.m., and it pisses me off. <laughs> I, I can't I can't get up at noon or anything. I, I, w I wish I could sometimes. Yeah, then by like 3 p.m. we're fucking tired of shit. And you're like, oh, you know, I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, dude, I, you know, I was thinking last night how much, how long I've known you guys, you know, in the game. Uh, you know, when we started, Metal Injection started, and and you guys were, you know, starting along with your uh, your music videos and, and really breaking it. It was such a, a fucking awesome time, I think, in, in music and metal. And, uh, you know, I've watched you guys go through so much, you know, unwavering perseverance throughout all the years, no matter what happened to you guys. Mm -hmm. Where do you think that, you know, comes from, that tenacity? Yeah, uh, it always goes back to your your foundation. You know, what's your foundation? And uh, luckily, without us trying, you know, for those of you that don't know, um, you know, I started the band in 2001, 2002. So you're kind of like once that, once anything extreme happens, which you can't plan for, it just happens. And then you're really forced of, I mean, you know, what's your foundation? And luckily without knowing, we just had, quite frankly, the strongest foundation possible. Like we were a real band. We we're real band members tied to each other only through only music. When, when, you, when you took away all the bullshit, I mean, it was just, wow. I mean, we're, we're, we're friends and we're here because of the music and uh and when something like that happens like you kind of have to have an og in there just to make sure everything feels right just to make everything is for the right reasons and again for i mean it had with the integrity it just you kind of need to have like the founder in there if, if you don't you're you're fucked yeah so you're like the grounded grandfather of the group kind of deal not by choice but yeah <laughs> <laughs> I did not I did not want this I do not want this position but just uh sometimes in life you're just well this is who you are and this is what you gotta do and that's it do you consider yourself like a an even keel kind of person like uh in, in all facets of things that come your way nah I'm fucking moody uh but I guess do you know we we have like what's going on if you're having a conversation or a conflict with a friend or a family member you have what's going on internally and then you have what you're projecting outwardly you know so i guess people might say i'm pretty chill and even killed but i guess maybe i just think i'm moody because inside you're just controlling your emotions to make sure you make the right decision possible so i guess i from outwardly i'm pretty chill but emily you know really learned to uh control emotions just to make sure we don't fuck up essentially right yeah i, I mean we've hung out you know enough times where i kind of like feel that from you like that we have that similarity you know what i mean like people are like mm. oh you're so chill but like in my head is a fucking war zone you know of course of course man yeah humans are fucking we're we're sensitive beings man you got yeah. you, you got to do you know like we we're talking about the gym earlier you got to do things to just uh keep that chaos controlled you know oh for sure i don't go to the gym because i'm like trying to get ripped but more like a mental thing like it just it's all mental my... it's 100 percent. it's all mental dude yeah, totally. That's cool. Do you do things in your life that you know makes you at ease? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, like <laughs> we were talking about Mitch earlier, but yeah, it was that. Like once, like Mitch passed away, it was just a complete like one eighty. Like get, I was getting blacked out, drunk every night, being an idiot and just being jaded as fuck. And then uh, once that happened. I uh, had to re reassess things. I completely stopped doing cocaine, like cold turkey, just stopped. And then, uh, you, you know, I think we all we all had that common. Like we have an age or time in our lives where 
some, most of the time it sucks, but like it takes something traumatic to kind of shake you like, oh, you know, this like, to kind of make, to make you re, re evaluate, uh, your life. And for, for me, it was that, and I was 26. So without knowing a damn thing about anything, um, I, I'm trying not to make this boring, but I'm trying to just condense like the boring part into like a, a minute, but yeah, you know, I got into literally when that happened, I got into reading books every single morning, no matter what I, w I woke up drunk. I put a book in my face before the phone before anything is had I just read I just, I, I just put things into, into my mind that like I was just trying to undo all this shit on uh, that you know like the gym yoga meditation I mean anything that that could help because I mean it just wasn't figuring out my own life but it was figuring out you know who I was with the outside chaos of uh, unfortunately like we had no time to grieve uh the whole Mitch thing it was just like literally he died. I drove home from from the hospital, and then someone got one of it on Facebook, and then it was fucking everywhere. And there was no like lost, you know, um, lost uh, everything at once. And then there's no like, oh shit! But everybody knows there was never any time to like uh, kind of chill and sit back. So you kind of, I was forced. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, we're I'm talk, we're talking earlier also about like being the founder and. I don't consider myself a leader by any means, but there's just things that you're put in, there's situations in your life that you're, you're thrown into and you have to accept it. And uh, just, you know, we were just trying to recover from that. And then you have, you know, three other guys with their own lives and taking it at their own pace with their own problems. So, you know, I was forced into a corner where like I had to clear my mind to make sure, you know, that, I, I, like the guys are good, the band's good, and we make you know like like the right choices. You know, it was it was it was insane. But you know what you said actually kind of reminds me of like being you know I, I'm not a father or anything like that, but how people talk about becoming a father like they're not ready, they're not ready, they're not ready, and then they have sure. to be. You know. Yeah. Yeah, we're all just going through this crazy thing called life, you know, and you just got to this. It was funny, like I didn't really know what it was until it happens, but yeah, I know it is what it is. And he's got to accept it and, and, and move forward, you know? Are you kind of a person who thinks back or do you, are you just like a, you know, what's ahead kind of person? Uh, yeah, both. And that's always been a crazy balance because, you know, thinking forward gives you anxiety and thinking in the past makes you fucking sad. And, but you got to be in, in the present to make the right decisions. And I really learned uh, through age i mean is trying is doing your best to compartmentalize things so there's a time where you're thinking forward you have you have the goals uh you know you know what we're going to be one year from now what are we going to do five years from now 20 years from now you know those those thoughts are you know we me personally i do think about that stuff and i write i write shit down then you know there's when i'm hanging out with let's say uh you met cc my my a girlfriend you know when you when you're when you're with the your someone that you love okay present nothing else matters and then when you're you're alone again okay then it's time to like you know re reassess your past and, and process certain feelings and insecurities that you might have haven't you know dealt with and how do you improve it and you say it's just it's all kind of happening at once but i learned what's helped me personally in my experience was just compartmentalize you like you have to like this is it right now you know i mean you know, so right now you know i'm talking to you frank and that's all that's happening right now and then when we're done talking maybe you know i might answer some emails that might require some thinking okay what's what's this gonna what's this decision gonna mean for me and the band and our music 15 years from now right it, 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 it'll fuck you up it yeah that's me. a lot of pressure <laughs> if, if it will it will fuck you up dude it, de it definitely uh, makes me go a little nutty <laughs> yeah again that that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself and, and mm -hmm. think that far ahead for every decision that you're going to make you know i i think yeah it's totally. okay to make mistakes <laughs> though you yeah. know and and that's kind of i think what we've been getting at with suicide silence what i appreciate is that you always took those chances you know mm -hmm. and sink or swim you took those chances and i think that's yeah. a really important thing for any musician or band to do appreciate that yeah do you ever like sit there locked and thinking about like or have a regret you know for the things that didn't go so well do you ever like sit there and beat yourself up about it yeah i mean not as much now but i learned to separate 
regrets from learning experiences and then so there's like i have like a like two or three like these are not even these are learning experience but these are like straight up like regrets but yeah i mean no one i mean no other band in our genre has made not even a fraction of the amount of risks <laughs> as like if you take the whole death course scene and add up all their risk taking they still won't add up to us period i mean it, and a, a lot of our failures are and mistakes are so public and then you have the private ones that are even worse <laughs> and then um uh, but you know those are all i mean i have this i'm coming out of all that i have this toolbox of all of this experience and all this shit i learned that none of them else have and that's pretty priceless but with regrets i mean yeah i mean there's stuff like you know i you know i wish i hung up with mitch more i had like because you know like because suicide silence is me and mitch that was that was suicide silence it's like i it sounds cheesy but it's our tool our two souls combined that's that's the sound that's the that's the soul and bones and uh integrity of suicide silence so once you know, uh, I just wish like, cause we didn't really hang out once the band took off. Like there was, it went from like, you know, us hanging out in a garage to now we're, you know, in arena with Slayer. I, it, it seemed like a fucking, like, like that, that leap seemed seamless and like a, it, it, it was very quick. And I just wish like we, uh, we had the mental, emotional capacity to kind of sit down and hang out more and talk about the band and where and where we're going and more importantly our, our friendship but uh those conversations really never happened that's so. uh i'm yeah they say you know never have regrets but straight up i get asked that you know do you regret that my i that is a fucking deep demon and um, i regret i wish like i just wish we sat down and talked and hung out more and didn't take things for granted but uh man, that's a that's a regret i mean it's hard to kind of do that i guess when you're snowballing into this big thing you know like this endeavor and, and it did mm -hmm. take off for you guys and you know i, I don't know I, I guess my point is i don't want you to walk away feeling that regret because oh, you guys managed to do something together that you mm -hmm. know 99 percent of people in the world wish they can do you know and and mm -hmm. won't and can't so you know yeah. at the very very least like you got to experience something true and, and golden with him you know so yeah it was a it was a crazy ride and yeah you're right you know it's, we're we're lucky that we we had to we got to live that that crazy life together you know and uh so everything i do now it's like you you know uh, it's i mean it, it is it is for him i kind of treat him like you know sometimes i'll go like you know what would it like what would he do so it's kind of like my way of having like like a second chance of this you know i, I wonder what he would do I wonder what we would talk about and you know, what, like, what, like, what decision would, would we make, which, you know, people may not like it fans too, but those, those decisions get made and they're pu publicly they're, they're beat down. But I feel like if we were talking like, maybe like, this is what we would do. Let, let's, let's do a self-titled record. I, I just kind of, it's all, it's all I have. So we, I, you know, what, because it always goes back to your, we we're talking about our foundation, it always goes back to the music. Take out everything, everything, all the bullshit. It's always the music and what can make, what can make this the best possible, you know? And unfortunately that means making decisions that, uh, that are public setbacks, but it's like, what's, what's this going to mean for us in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, if we do this and do that. So, you know, that kind of, that's kind of a way I deal with my, my, uh, my regret. It's kind of, you know, what, you know, what will we, what will we talk about? You know, it's crazy. Another, I guess, change, uh, this album, this new album, it, it, you know, of course features your beast of a drummer, Ernie, who mm -hmm. is actually no stranger to suicide silence, mm -hmm. but there was some confusion over the way that your last album became, become the hunter was credited. And oh just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just True. wondering what was the story about, you know, how that went down. Uh, let's see. So yeah, we were trying to. That was the first, probably the only, first and only batch of songs that weren't written in a garage. So for right, for those of you that don't know, everything before becoming a hunter and after has been written in the same garage. 
pre Mitch. This is pre Mitch shit, dude. Like SS was born in his in my, in my parents' garage, and we still and we wrote our demos there and and the cleansing and Black Crown, uh, Yolo, you name it. And then and, and and we're back there now, but especially because like after Mitch happened, okay, how can we keep it? a little behind the scene core deep core factors like get get in the room. There's some shit going on, like uh, you know, I I love Alex. Uh, he, I, we I, like we still talk, but he wanted to get the spot next to his house because you know drummers and bass players are always fucking late. So and so in my head, I was okay. If we, if we go to him, he won't be late. Of course, I knew that wasn't gonna be the case. <laughs> he was still late, but uh, yeah, he was going through. We were writing, things were clicking. Um, you know, Mark took that uh, sabbatical for a year. So it all happened like at once. So we got this spot. I didn't like it. It was, we're at a weird spot in our career. Uh, we're trying to write music after the self-titled things. I couldn't predict all that, that affected other band members way differently than me. Uh, so yeah, Mark went out for a year. Alex had some personal issues. I don't even know what, like, what he was going through. And then we just got Ernie and uh, just, uh, just uh, from a time factor, it's like, damn, we, I mean, we're, we're taking a long time to write music and this is. It's bullshit. And uh, just through necessity, we just had to get the music out. You know, I, it's, not, it's not the best way to put music out, but you know, there's deadlines. I'm like, we, we got to put something out and sit. And then uh, Ernie's from the same area. For those, for those of you that don't know, uh, Ernie's like from the same uh, Orange County area. He's, he's Latino. He's from, he's from the scene. So it's kind of like, he was kind of like a, Another version of Alex, like just a dude like deep rooted in a scene that we know him for for a while and play shows around the area. Like he like he wasn't just just a rando, you know. Uh, he was just like we, and uh, yeah, we wrote the rest of those songs with with Ernie. There was somewhere like there was some that that we started with Alex, and then Ernie came in and finished them. So it was like a weird credited, which I don't even know. Like, because I mean, I don't. It, it was hard for that record because. Everything prior to that was split evenly, which a lot of bands will say, don't do that, don't do that. But for us, we've always we've been that way. You know, if you wrote the song or not, like we were credited as an equal member. So we're used to that for fucking five, six records and demos. And then we come to this other part of our career. Oh, we got to split this like what? How many ways? And I don't even know how some of those songs turned out, to be honest. I haven't looked at those credits. But yeah, it was a it was a, a tough time. You know, it, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like, you know, you're trying to move forward and other people are going through their lives. Someone's turning 30 and having a fucking quarter life crisis and like, everyone's just trying to grow up. And it was, it was a yeah, I honestly don't don't like that record at all. That's interesting. OK, I say safe to say that this record is a very different feeling for you then what going mm -hmm. in you know knowing who's involved yeah uh, definitely this one was a lot uh, a lot funner and easier compared to like, to like the last one that was hell <laughs> it was it was it was a lot to get i'm surprised that record even came out to to be honest i i'm so surprised it came out people you know fans liked it oh they went back to the summer like, really holy shit. I, it, it kind of showed me i don't know shit what, what if it goes out there i i don't know how people are going to react to it like i don't like that record it was, to me that's our worst record by by far that's interesting i thought i thought it was actually a killer record so Crazy, and i, had, I, I don't yeah. fucking know anything dude don't. and i had no idea that it was kind of you know a tough time or piecemealed like that did you get a bash uh lack uh, sorry a backlash of any kind with the, you know the the member change because i know every time you seem to have a member change there's like some suicide silence uproar where it's just like oh you know like sure. i mean look at um you know, the, the Mitch and, and Eddie. I mean, our boy Eddie's now been in the band, I think, longer than Mitch has, and he still gets, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds so, of shitty comments and stuff. Yeah, that was... Uh, the Ernie thing was seamless because it was very cool. It was like that that, that split was very, like, um, we're not... We're a real band, and we're definitely different in that sense for, like, since day one. I mean, pre-fucking fan base. Like, we, we always... You know, when we made a decision to either kick someone out or bring someone else in, we got in that in that same garage and hashed it out. We, we we've we've talked and uh, you know, previous members that people don't even know who I'm talking about that we've 
not, aren't in a band anymore pre pre demos and and, uh, and cleansing. Like we've had conversations. I had girlfriends storm out and people quit. Uh, like, but we've always did it face to face. Always did it face to face. Alex, same thing. We've talked before that decision happened. We got in a room and we hashed it out and, and we talked like, I guess, trying to be grown men, <laughs> you know. And uh, so, so I guess maybe that kind of subconsciously in the press release might have been in there like people kind of sense oh i mean this isn't so drama or so nothing it's just it was just time to move on and then ernie he wasn't some rando it was kind of like one of those i don't even know how we did it to be honest but yeah i guess that that release has had a lot of there was a lot of some conscious integrity in it because it, it was done right so i so so, so that it seems seamless but obviously compared to eddie i mean that's a whole like other thing like going into that like uh, I say that's pretty often, but I mean, I knew before even going into all that, I knew 100% this is going to be rough. This is gonna be a rough ride. And um, um, I was like, he needs at least at least three records to get some footing. And I was wrong. It's gonna take more. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's nuts. It, it is wild, you know, um, Eddie's a fucking beast as as well as Ernie. Like you got you set yourself up with a lot of amazing players, and um, I you know I I commend you on that because I think it's important not to break up with somebody over a post-it note. You know. Yeah, fuck that. You know, same same with breakups. Break up in person. You know, when we we know it's not working. All right, this is this is end this dinner. <laughs> it's over. You know. Well, I know I'm, that you know Suicide Silence prides you know themselves and yourself on on doing things different with every album, like we spoke about, mm -hmm. and you know uh, taking those chances. Mm -hmm. um, you know, be it a new studio, a producer, sound, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what is the thing that you think will shine on this record when fans get to hear it? I think with this record, is uh, I think people will kind of feel sense of. Um, I hear like the words get thrown around like the OG sound and then the cleansing sound, which, you know, that was, that was kind of, uh, done on purpose, but not musically. Like we, we didn't get together. Hey, we'll just write stuff at the cleansing. It's more like, you know, that stuff naturally happens when you're just friends again and you're, you're just hanging out, being buddies, getting drunk together, watching UFC fights. We're just getting in a better we're not there yet it's gonna take us a while to to get back to where to where we were but you know i think people kind of sense like you know there's like a this dude's playing heavy shit that same thing that we did you know right in the cleansing you know so i think kind of this that sound kind of happened and it seems like people really are stoked on it and i am i am too one thing that really always carries over no matter what you do with your sound or or studios or you know is is uh the groove you know like that's such a big thing i think in your sound and what you do is you know and you can hear those grooves and influences that stem from you know like new metal and and you know 90s mm -hmm. and stuff how of did course. you end up you know uh a new metal fan actually you know like especially in a, in a scene as i remember it didn't really accept it at first yeah i mean yeah i first heard corn when i was like I think 12 like i saw that like, the got the live video and that was it like i wanted like okay that's guitar long hair rock out tuning drop a groove then they were they came into town like a like right out right out of the gate like so which kind of maybe some constantly influenced me hey when you put a record you got a fucking tour they were they were they're going to be in town right then and there with rob a zombie for the rock is dead tour i saw that in person it was just like like I can't listen to corn anymore. Like I have to play with them. I mean, I I, I have to. I'm 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 gonna be up there. I mean, I'm gonna be on tour with them. I'm I'm gonna be on a monkey side. You know, one one day, and then uh, yeah, I just got into really got into new metal and like uh, corn was the band that really. I mean, they're they're still my favorite band. You know, monkey. He's he's my favorite guitar player on the planet. Him and Ross Robinson, obviously besides my parents, they are my favorite humans on the planet, hands down. And then. You know, it got into Slipknot. You hear something, you start hearing like Mud Veins and Limp Biscuits, um, like Disturbed, Stains, all these great bands. And then I found Fear Factory that opened up this whole 
world of like, okay, it gets it's like, what, what's this? And then I got an animal corpse and then skinless and warm and uh, eternal suffering. Like, oh God, okay, wait, like, and then trying to, all those bands, it's, all they did was just teach me like, just ex how do you make things extreme? Like just really maximize, over exaggerate everything. You know, like, like your, your look, like the blast beats, like the vibe, the energy. And uh, yeah, just uh, yeah. I mean, new metal got me into heavy music, and then just, I found you know death metal. Like, and uh, shout out to the OGs, uh, Devourment. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I just, yeah, I mean, I, I owe you know a lot of my inspiration for you know from all those bands. Hey, it's back. You know, everything comes back, right? So weird. It's strange. I, I can't help but be like a bitter fan. You know, it's, it was like, you know, like, you know, where, like, where the fuck were all you bands? Like, they're all, you know, now it's cool to wear a corn shirt in your promo, you know, videos and uh, interviews now. But man, like when we started, like we were just fans and which just goes back to like, you know, that first break. Why is SS still a band and still here? Well, we were always ourselves and you know, for, for better or for worse, you know, like wearing a corn shirt at a, uh, you know, Orange County Inland Empire hardcore show seeing Throwdown was a big no-no. You don't do that. It was not cool. It was it was not cool, and you would look down down upon. It, it was so weird because they were like, they were number one on, on the Billboard, so they seemed popular. But in but we came from like, like the death metal underground scene and like the hardcore scene. So like we were still we were listening to it, wearing the T-shirts, but it like no one else was. But they were all. But I knew. I knew back then, as a dumb, stupid, thirty-year-old kid, I knew that. Okay, like they're trying to all kick me around in, in the pit. I get it. I'm the one new metal guy in here. But you guys are going home and all jamming Slipknot, and you're not talking about it. And to me, that was fucking fake. And that's one thing I, I didn't like. And we kind of uh, stuck to our our guns. So that's me being a bitter fan now. It's like now it's like they're like. I mean, obviously, Corn Slipknot, they deserve it. I mean, they've. It's really cool to see him now. I'm like, damn, like you guys are like, you're you now. You guys are, you're, you're really corn now. You're like officially slipped on and took him, you know, what fucking over 25 years to do that. That's, that's, that's pretty remarkable. But I was like, you know, the, the bitter fan of me, I'm like, man, seeing all these bands wear the t-shirts now. I'm like, well, you know, where, like, where the fuck were you? And, and then talk like they, they were there. It's, 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 it's well, Slipknot, I, 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 I've seen, I was a fan since day one, and I actually uh, saw like their first ever um, solo live shows and stuff like that. It was, it was really intense because, you know, going back to like the whole death metal and new metal thing, I was actually um, waiting in line for uh, a Slipknot show where they, they played Limelight in New York City, and it was like one of nice. the first things that they did, and... It, I was online with, uh, you know, Will Raymer of, uh, uh, of Mortician and some of nice. the guys and some of the guys in Suffocation. And like, you know, I was a little kid, but I, re I was listening to them talk and they were they're like, yo, man, this band is going to be what like blows up death metal. You know, like this is going to really? be that crossover. And wow. I just thought it was like amazing that these like you know, old school death metal heads had that foresight to understand that like this is really good for death metal. You know, like this, this wow. new metal death metal band Slipknot is going to be what breaks everybody out, you know? Dude, that's fucking cool. Yeah. I mean, you had, uh, speaking more like what, uh, what we were talking about, you you are right. Like there was, there was like the death metal bands that went both ways. Like there was like, I like the wills from, from Mortician, I guess, I guess Suffo. I was talking to the environment like last week, hanging out with them. They're, they're, they're talking about that whole like new metal genre, how they were, Thinking like man this is sick I'm like wow there's because all i saw was like there's i won't name them but there's definitely bands and hardcore bands that like to shoot like just shoot it away and, like similar to what they did with like the deathcore genre you know so it's kind of like it's really it's refreshing to know and, and like hear about that oh yeah there were like some ogs in, in the death metal scene like hey this shit's gonna be sick you know because there there's there was a uh, other bands that I won't name that, you know, that went, went on tour with and treated, treated us like shit. And there was that this whole like, but so yeah, it's, I guess there's, uh, it's good to know there, there's two sides. But I mean, talking about bringing things back, I mean, Deathcore is actually something that's really, you know, popular and resurged mm -hmm. once again. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, and 
what are your feelings on you know the new deathcore bands out there? Do you feel inf- infiltrated in like your scene that you helped create and pioneer, or is there a place for everybody to coexist? Yeah, well, yeah. First off, I believe in like abundance, you know, and that and that comes from just knowing who you are. You know, I I know who I am. You know, I'm a guitar player for Suicide Silence. I'm a not a metal kid. I, I don't leave the fucking first two frets. You know, I just go with two one zero two one zero chug chug. It's it's just you know, I mean, so once you know who who you are and and your place in in, in the genre, like seeing. Cause back, cause back in the day, like I was super bitter. I was, I was an insecure little, little kid, and uh, thankfully, I have a with all these new wave of, of deathcore bands, kind of had like, like like a second chance to, you know, just truly appreciate them and uh, and and root them on. And, and if, if I have an opportunity or a Sui has an opportunity, we could actually help them, which is kind of so. It's it's been really cool seeing a lot of these newer bands come up and. And uh, not be bitter about it, you know. It's, it's cool, and I mean, and also like, you know, they, you know, I don't, I couldn't have predicted this. And also like, uh, Suicide Sons, I don't think we'll be here if there wasn't this whole new wave of bands. So we definitely owe it to them as well. You know that that we're that we're going strong now. We're trying to like, you know, we're we've been going through all this shit, and now this new wave comes up and then we're, we're, we're in the wave. I'm like, damn, like, I, that, I mean, we're fucking pretty lucky, <laughs> you know? And it's, it's cool to see bands like Lorna getting those tours and um, getting like the big tours that like we, we were doing in like 2008, you know? It's like, I, 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 I try so hard not to be a dad. I, I just want to call him or text me, hey, dude, like, you know, careful with this, careful with that. Don't, don't, I, like, don't listen to that. But, you know, the only way to figure it out is just to live through it and make and and make your make your mistakes <laughs> just like it's like we did but yeah it's just it's uh it's great to fucking see this this new wave of bands i mean i i wanted to <laughs> shout outs but there's just too many to name <laughs> there's 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 a lot of bands and something that happened recently w- with me like it's really which i get the i get this second chance in, in my career in life and they're putting a fire underneath my ass like she i don't it's kind of it's, it's a weird timing thing it's a weird timing thing where like i'm naturally already at home practicing way more than i i usually do i'm just fucking sitting there down picking to like to like johnny ramon stuff and um it's just and then there's everyone's so sick like i i, I want to be sick too <laughs> so it's so it's nice to kind of have that healthy competition and that healthy uh fire underneath my ass you know because i i definitely what wasn't getting it from my my uh my band members you know i'm a very competitive guy i'm very like extremely in in, in a very healthy way me and mitch are like everybody's dead i mean i mean if you're if you're gonna play with us it's literally like it's over (laughs) but so it's just nice to kind of be older and kind of bring that attitude back but in the more abundant (laughs) oh way and healthy with, with, with your mindset and uh, knowing when to, you know, just just help other bands. Yeah. I, well, I think that's a, a really, you know, even headed way and, and um, uh, a humble, you know, way of looking at it. So, you know, kudos and, and commending you for that because, you know, I think uh, many others in your position could, you know, you can go either way, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure. But I think you're you're taking the sure. right approach, and and I've seen you take out some of these bands and and really you know uh, have a kinship with them and and help them, and I think that's really cool, you know. Yeah, and, you know, I wanted to talk to you a bit about your uh, your podcast for a minute because you cool. know you you broke out into the platform like super pro. I mean, I'm looking at you right now, like you're like with all fucking sick space going on, you know. I remember us joking once about how, you know, I, like, you know, I've been the interviewer trying to break out into music forever and you're the musician mm-hmm. and trying to break out into what I do into the interviews. Yeah. When, mm-hmm. when did you take, you know, the whole podcasting and interviewing thing, um, an interest, you know, like when, when, where did that interest start? Uh, right when, 
uh, people don't know this, but um, right when Eddie joined the band, uh, we all were going to, we all saw a group therapist that specialized in, in uh, grieving. So literally like we we're all uh, suicides with Eddie, we were in a room with a, like a, ther a therapist. <laughs> he was he was a cool guy. His name's uh seems Richard. He was uh he was gay and he just he was so he was sick and he, he just because Eddie got thrown into the woods, which people don't give him credit for, like at all. His first tour was in January in Australia on uh, in Soundway Festival. Soundway Festival is a massive so his first show uh, in front of like ten thousand people. Just you know, let's do it. So we had Soundwave lined up all the June European festivals on main stage slots. And we got, we just got the uh, Mayhem tour with the uh, event zone fold and, and corn, like, and, and Camel Corpse. We had like literally the biggest that we could get. I mean, it, it, it didn't go any, like it, it couldn't have gone any smoother from that aspect of it. So we got lucky there, but we're like, we're about to go, go through some shit, dude. So we saw like, you know, a therapist and, um, I started me personally, I stopped the band stop. So I went personally, just, I started doing, uh, just, you know, single sessions. And then, uh, I guess, yeah, one of the, the therapist, one of his patients was, was a fan. So I'm getting the therapist hit me up to go into a session and be a therapist. It was, it was fuck. Now that I look back, it's kind of weird, but, uh, yeah, this, this kid was talking to me and I just, you know, just do what I do. I, I don't, I don't talk. I just, just, cause I'm a pretty, I'm a very reserved guy and quiet and just in general, I'm just listening to this kid talk and just listening. And then I gave him some feedback and it was this really cool exchange. And that just, and around that same time, um, I, Mark told me about podcasting. This is 2014. Um, I was like, oh, podcasting. I'm like, what's that? And I got, I got into like Dave, Dave Asprey stuff, uh, Tim Ferriss. Um, those are my my first like kind of podcast, and then, you know, just same same thing as a band. Like, I heard about it, I found something that I love. I mean, you know, and then the thought popped in, like, man, I, I want to do this. You're talking 2014, 2015, but we're just about to go on tour <laughs> in uh, in Australia. I didn't have the mental, emotional capacity to take on a new project. We're we're about to embark on this journey with Eddie. That's about to get that's about to be hell essentially, and, and it was. And, uh, but the thought was always there. It was always kind of like, man, I want to like, I, I, I just want to do this. And then uh, obviously the pandemic happened and I had this, this spare time. And at, at that point I was a different person. You know, I, I, it took me years to get out of those clouds, um, you know, pre Mitch. And then I was, you know, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm ready to take on a, a new project. And we're sitting at home doing jack shit. And then I just, just like just like music obsessed i got obsessed and i just dove into it this right 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 out of the gates just just like music i like that you you just basically started out like the most pro you know thing that you can do like oh, so wh where is your setup is are you in your house right now the first one with when uh with the first 20 episodes that's in my parents garage oh the <laughs> the infamous garage where everything happens that's exactly so it's kind of it's kind of like a band so they I, so it's like funny, like I turned to my parents, hey, can I t turn this into a, like a studio? Because it's just a shitty garage. I was like, uh, so I kind of wanted, I didn't want people to know that it was in a, uh, in a garage. Two, I knew I was gonna suck really bad at it. So I was like, if I make it really pro, it will hide that I suck. <laughs> so so that so that's gonna buy me some time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's so that went from the. Uh, yeah, I went from the garage, I hit up a few sponsors, I got some sponsors, but instead of uh, pocketing it, I just got a new space, which is here, which is uh, in Santa Ana, which is between all the uh, venues around here. And um, yeah, it's just a shitty office spot, and just painting the walls and just put it, time into it, just like, just like a band, just dove into it, obsessed, hours and hours and hours of research and just doing, doing shit for it. And uh, it's crazy that I don't know. It kind of it's weird. It's weird that I'm still doing it. <laughs> well, I, and you, you, you've really have a knack for it. Like you know, you've you figured Appreciate it out. That. You know, um, and uh, I, I think that's awesome. Like, because I remember there was something that you wanted to do, and I love that you have that passion to just go ahead and do it. You know, because 
I think that's mm-hmm. something that really stops a lot of people, you know. They might want to do something, but they don't yeah. actually do it. And, you know, you're a man of your your words. You put it to action, so. Appreciate that. I mean, thankfully, we have a career just taking risks without knowing. I just built this muscle where, like, if I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm not, there's no thought process. Like, you got to do it. You got to do it. You know, I always kind of trusted, like, it, it's only happened, I mean, in my life. It's only happened, you know, two, two to three, three times. And that's actually why. I took, I took a podcasting, like, a the only time I knew who I was and what I wanted to do was when I heard corn, I want, I want to be a guitar player. That's it. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to go on tour. I'm, this style of music is going to be in arenas, period. That says, I, 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 I mean, I, I saw that as, as, as a kid, I got that feeling. I pursued it without any, you know, uh, <laughs> thought process. You get, you, you, it's, it's like going to gym. Stop. Don't think. Cause you're, you're going to fuck yourself. <laughs> just fucking just dive, just dive in. And uh, it happened uh, right before podcasting. I I wanted to be a therapist, but then, like music, I figured out. Oh wait, I don't want to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do. I don't want to do the years of school. So wait, I'll, I'll just I'll just do do podcasting. You know, that's that's just that's yeah, kind of like the same thing. I'm very lucky that it's I do owe it uh, to Suicide Silence having like all like these little things that I have experienced that I lived already. I just applied it like to this, you know, like this, this is, this is what it's going to be. Never waver the vision and that's it, you know? And, uh, you know, I saw, you know, there, w- there wasn't really anything else going on in, in the podcasting world that that's, that's similar to this. So I was like, you know, that I just, I, I should do this. And unfortunately, like another reason why I started, the podcast and I'll, I'll close the subject, but I feel like we're talking about Mitch a lot. Shit. Um, but yeah, when that happened, fans and people, no one knew shit about the band. It's like there was uh, like all the stuff on like the, on, on the wiki was wrong. Like the, like a lot of interviews were wrong. Like this, no one knew any, anything about the band. And it sounds like not a big deal, but for us, it's a massive deal because no one knew who was in the band besides Mitch. So, so, so they, they didn't know like, like, like the history. They didn't know anything about me, uh, where, where the music came from, the band, like, the, nothing was really. So, so once like, uh, we, we got Eddie, like no one knew shit. And I was like, oh wait, the band died with Mitch. Cause people thought he was the founder. Cause the, I, that information's out there. It was like, I don't know how. It's just people put out this narrative and uh, I know what it's like, unfortunately, to to try to put out the right narrative and it's fucking hell. It's fuck. It's been hell. And I don't want I don't want another artist or band to go through what we w- went through because it sucks. So I I have this thing now and, you know, I've been having bands on and to try to try to get those try to get their story out there. You know, because I because I know what it's like when your story's not out there, and um, things you don't plan for. You know, we we didn't plan for our singer died. You know, you know you don't plan for these things. So wait, we shouldn't have to get our story out there. We're actually uh, like 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 you should. So anything that I could do to get you know, so I asked me you know, wait, who's like who's the founder? Who's like who started that band? How do you guys write all these things that I wish was out there about Suicide Silence? I get to ask these bands so they won't have to, if anything happens to the band, they have a fucking foundation of, of, of the story out there that people could watch and see them, see their, see, see how they are as people. And, and yeah, I just, I just don't want them to go through what we went through. Yeah. No, I feel that man. And like I said, I mean, you're doing great at it and keep at it for sure. Have you learned anything about yourself, you know, going from musician to interviewer? I imagine that, like, you know, at least I feel that, like, one makes me better at the other. But I don't know, like, as somebody who dove so deep into podcasting, that whole world, like, mm-hmm. have, has that taught you anything about yourself? Good question. Um, it's what's also weird about this thing is it's so about, like, the guest. I kind of forget about myself sometimes. <laughs> what, what have I learned? I'm lucky to be in a position I'm in. I'm lucky to be a part of a band that's considered like, like an OG uh, in the genre. So I kind of like, kind of know who I am, 
you know, so all, all I do is kind of like just try to put it, just put it out there. So as far as podcasting, what, what have I learned uh, by myself? It's kind of things, it just re, it just reassured what I already thought about myself. If, if that makes any sense. Yeah. No, you, know, makes I, sense. you know, I've always knew, I've always kind of knew I was like a good listener, you know, um, I guess one thing I have learned was, uh, worth ethic, <laughs> you know, start starting something from scratch and, um, you know, how hard it is to, uh, oh, oh, wow. Um, all right, how, how am I, how am I going to, going to process these things? Uh, learning how, well, one thing, it taught me how to talk because I, I took uh, a speech, uh, I saw, how do you say it, a speech pathologist. It helped me with like, you know, get, get my words out. Cause I, I struggle like putting my thoughts in, in, into words, but, uh, it taught me that I had a lot of insecurities that I thought I processed that I haven't processed. That's what I'm trying to say. Because uh, when you start something new, things are things are going to go wrong. Like with the, with Siwi, things were going wrong. Plus, starting something new, there sit there are all these insane struggles. Like you know, I'm I'm in a fucking serious debt with with, with this with with this thing, and so that causes like these were little insecurities that you didn't even know you had. Uh, so I learned a lot about myself, uh, things that have to be dealt with like quick. Um, like, um, I don't know. It just, it just taught me like, like to work harder. And when you work harder, you just have to, there's just things you got to deal with in your personal life. Like it's, and it's weird. I'll be like talking to somebody and then, I'll go home a different person. It was just, it was just like, it was just the feelings just get awakened and like, like, like these, these cans of worms would just get awakened. And then, you know, some demons in my closet, like, um, since I started this thing, like, uh, we were talking about, you know, being moody and shit. Like at that point I, I got a girlfriend, uh, which, you know, you met and she's, she's sick. Yeah, she's, she's also white. white very yeah. lovely person she's lovely man she's um she's why also why i'm doing this kind of gave me like the confidence but you know when you <laughs> like you take out your anger on the people closest to you right yeah <laughs> so uh I, I know she's gonna hear this and know exactly what i'm talking about unfortunately but, you know a couple of times you know i've had you know the podcast maybe had me mental breakdowns that manifested in serious arguments with my uh girlfriend serious like uh you know i'm, I'm like yelling i'm, I'm like my, i'm not I, like, this, like this isn't me like what is this and, and it happened twice and those are now demons in my closet that I, I, i'm going to have to live with and then that i wouldn't have gotten there if it wasn't for doing this because i i can't do this with a clear head or letting other person how about the 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 <laughs> that the mental capacity to listen to another human tell their story and be able to get their story out there without dealing with my own shit. And that's something I didn't know I had to do. And uh, wow, I didn't even know. Thanks, Frank, but I didn't even know this. But yeah, I mean, it, it kind of forced me into a, a situation outside the podcast, where it's like, yeah, I had, there's some insecurities I had, had to deal with, and they manifested and they built up, and I had to deal with them. And uh, thankfully, the podcast helped me this helped me become a, be a better person. Yeah, really. I, I, I totally agree. And, you know, like you, um, I was a double major in college. Uh, I was uh, music and psychology. So, oh, wow. Sick, yeah. dude. So at some point I thought I was going to be a psychologist. And, and I feel Damn. like both of those things really apply to what I'm doing today. So Totally. Uh, you know, totally. And, and you're right. It's, it does take uh, something in your life, you know, a special place to, to listen to somebody's story and, uh, you know, not yeah. go berserk sometimes, you know? Yeah. I, it just taught me, like, I have, I kind of proud of myself. It taught me I have a lot of emotional and mental capacity and you, and, and, and the limits you have, I've only put on myself 
because this this has pushed me into a whole other direction that that band can't even push me towards. And that really taught me my, um, you know, like what I could handle that I didn't really know that I could handle, which has been, been another hell, but it's been fucking cool, man. And uh, I'm, I'm lucky. Well, it sounds like it's another outlet for you, you know, it is. And that, that's, oh, yeah. you know, it's like you have your emotional oh, outlets through, you know, music and, and now mm-hmm. podcasting and, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a great thing, man. And I love seeing like the, you know, the the artists out there like yourself and Doc and, and Rob Flynn, mm-hmm. like do this kind of thing, you know, because it's, mm-hmm. you know, I think you guys have a, a certain perspective that many others, even mm-hmm. myself, don't. So, mm-hmm. you know, but, yeah. um, you know, on, on that tip, I don't know how much you get involved with like the lyrics of the records, or you know, the especially the title, because something like "Remember You Must Die" is mm-hmm. kind of a very stark album mm-hmm. title, you know. And I yeah. don't know if that's something that you guys came together and spoke about beforehand, or, um, you know, if that's that if that was just an Eddie thing, or that idea came from from Mark, because uh, I mean, we 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 all see see it like uh like the memento mori it's, it's it's out there i mean i think lemon god has a record called that and a lot of bands kind of do that or just ideas but we did it like in a in suicide sounds fashion <laughs> it's just wait let's make this easier wait what is what does that mean just say that play it fucking four four chug chug come on <laughs> it's like we kind of put like the ss twist and just made it like wait let's just use like what it actually means in plain English, and uh, yeah, it's uh, that was Mark's idea, and uh, we all we all lo- loved it, and this just fucking went with it, right? I, is that like a, a a comment to you know how people are living these days? Um, I'm trying not to get so dark, but uh, yeah, I, I like I like I like reminding myself, you know, of a, a mentality you know i think i think it's a very healthy thing you know it's a it's a very good motivator <laughs> you know i know uh, it's a very good motivator uh, i will i will say that but yeah this i guess uh for anyone that could take what they uh they can from it or want from it you know i think i, I think it's a, a healthy thing yeah no i i agree it is a good motivator and uh yeah, I think it's, you know, not something to dwell on, but something important to know for sure. That, totally. You know, no. And uh, it, it'll assess your life in a different way. Well, and exactly. all I can say is, you know, the album itself is fucking fantastic. Congratulations, you know, another killer record and, and really you. all your success and the podcast and everything you're doing, man. Thank you, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan here. So everybody... Remember, you must die. Suicide silence. It's coming this March, and make sure you listen to Garza podcast. It's out there every week.